uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Are you able to hear me? Uh, we just uh, um, give up, give your vote to, on your live meeting session so that I would have an idea if you are not able to hear me. And if you are not able to hear me, um, type in the question questionnaire panel. Welcome to the Community Day 2013 webcast for Exchange 2013, more in public folders. Um, I would like to set some rules before we start that if you have any questions, write on your questionnaire, question and answer panel on the right or left. And after after the session, we will have a survey during the time you can post, uh, I mean, you can obviously ask your questions uh, on the questionnaire and panel, and I will answer all your questions there. All right, so let's move on and begin the session. All right, we already said the agenda of R is Exchange 2013. Modern public folders is the topic of the day. And the timings when we are starting in different time zones, uh, that's what I shared with most of the people around the globe. Um, I, I could see the um, uh, acceptance and the registration from all across the globe. But yeah, because of the time differences, I can understand they might not be able to join. And if you're able to join, I will try to make this session um, worth it um, I'll try to make you make it session make this session helpful and uh, good learning for you all right so something about me myself Prabhat Nigam I'm a Microsoft most valuable professional for exchange server I write my blog at my msexchangeguru.com which is the third cool community suggested by Microsoft exchange team I'm Microsoft Certified Solution Expert of Exchange 2013. I'm a MCITP for Exchange 2010 and 20, 2007. I'm also a MCSE of 2003, 2000 and NT. I have worked for Microsoft PSS Support for Exchange Server for two years. Currently, I work on consulting in Exchange Migration Projects. This is about me. Let's move on to the agenda of the hour. Uh, all right. So the agenda of the R's, um, or the R is modern public folders overview, public folders roadmap, modern public folders architecture, legacy public folders versus modern public folder, modern public folders hierarchy synchronization, modern public folders access, modern public folders compatibility. Public folders in coexistence, migration requirement and, and assumptions, legacy to modern public folders, migration steps, and then summary. All right. So modern public folders overview. The purpose: public folder has been used to share the emails and the files. This has been um, seen mostly some organizations share their company policies there as well so that if, if anyone joins and they can just go through this public folder and open the public fold, public uh, um, company policies there and read, read them. Public folders are a collection of shared information. A user's data takes, takes many forms, calendar entries, project details, activities, contacts, tasks, emails, so, and so forth. Some of this data can be private and relevant only to a single user. However, some data can be useful to a group of users and the entire organization. And let's talk about usage. In most instances, there are used to store shared calendar, files, contacts, um, 
global email messages. Some are open to organization or limit to group or individual. Um, the, the data and format of public folder offers a degree of flexibility that allows you to customize form and field uh, contained contain in the documents. Thus, the user has the ability to define how documents are viewed, and the, most of the team uh, project teams also share this kind of data, um, um, use the public folders. Um, the requirement. Um, Public folder is mostly required when you need to share some kind of data with many people. Uh, this is a great feature which allows you to, um, which allows a single file to be worked up by multiple employees of the company or we can say many people. Primary users. Primary users are mostly um, HR, um, admins, um, project teams. So, Basically, the other teams, which whoever wants to share some data among a bunch of people, they can copy the data there. They can give some permissions um, to different users, read-only read access or writable access, whichever wants. A project team will give write writable access, but may not be giving the delete or creation access to that particular file or um, in the public folder, basically. Um, but the HR team might create a file there with the policies and might give a read-only permission to a whole organization there. All right. What are the other options? So what more modern public folder brings you is other options. Now we are moving towards modern public folder, which is more convenient and reliable. Now we have an option of sharing mailbox for share mail, sharing mails, um, share, share calendar, for shared meeting, um, shared calendar for shared meetings, SharePoint for shared files. We can also create shared um, shared calendar in SharePoint. Um, we also have team mailbox. We'll talk about it in a, in a bit. So let's move on to the next slide. Hmm. All right, public folders roadmap. So we started with Exchange 2003 public folders, and it was the only option during Exchange 2003 times to share any data, or we could have shared using the file share, which was not so convenient. You couldn't have um, give give so many so many item level permissions. So with public folders, it allowed you to give some um, item level permissions, which uh, was not available in the uh, file share. And public folder is more reliable than file share. Um, then we move to Exchange 2007 and 2010, where many of us moved collaboration to SharePoint and kept shared mails to public folders, only the shared emails. Now we have it, and now with Exchange 2013, um, we have a team mailbox for collaboration, which allows you to access data from shared team mailbox or from SharePoint website. So what is shared, um, again, what, share, what is team mailbox? Team mailbox is a mailbox um, which integrates with SharePoint. It's very important to know that this kind of mailbox is, um, is shared um, and it integrates with SharePoint. So any data which you post uh, on SharePoint comes to this mailbox as well, or if any email comes to this mailbox gets uh, uh, updated in the website, or the attachment get up, uh, updated in the website automatically. Isn't it a cool feature? It's very nice. Um, uh, I mean, another advantage of Exchange 2013. All so this means um, this means all all the changes get updated to the SharePoint as well as mailbox. So now, uh, public emails can be sent to modern public folder. Now, public folder requirement is reducing with this kind of a feature, but I understand it will take some time, um, some time where you will you will feel this and uh, um, you will migrate the public folders and then split them to, into the mailboxes. All right, let's move on to the other slide. Modern public folders architecture. 
this is um uh, well this is a nice, very nice architecture um i really like this architecture so architecture has changed it's uh public folders are mailboxes now and no more databases it's not database um all the public folders stores hierarchy with only one writable which means one of the public folder mailbox uh, will have the will have the uh, hierarchy in writable mode which is the first mailbox you created it's a primary mailbox and other public folder mailbox will have only the read only copy of it then contents can be shared across multiple public folders uh, mailboxes which means you can create two mailbox two public folders in one and two in another and to another It depends on the uh, capacity of public folders you want to assign um all right so ne next is administration which will be same as mailboxes and accept same commands so let's say if you assign a uh, uh, mailbox limit at the database level it will be for mailboxes as well as for public folders so if you want to assign um a different mailbox limit you need to go to the properties of the particular public folder mailbox and increase it there all right so it's it's not very cool you don't have to do any extra step in terms of managing a mailbox it's also another mailbox same as a normal mailbox um then the permissions or the uh, mailbox i mean the public folder mailbox it will be the r back based permission management so it's like um it's the same as um it is, it is similar as the um, mailboxes so if you have to access the mailbox you need the recipient level permission to access that so say it's the same as like the same it's it's a convenience to use r back and assign the permission rather than searching for some permissions and assigning it assigning them um separately all right let's move to the next slide this this is very um this is a very nice slide uh, i really like it uh, a lot so um what is it it's it's a comparison between legacy and modern public folders so the data storage um earlier it used to be in the in legacy it used to be in the databases now it's public folder mailboxes all right So this is a big big difference so no more database you don't have to worry about another database uh, backup you have to just back up the mailbox database and it it also has a public folders but um i have seen many organizations they are i mean they they still want to operate in the same way so what they have done is they have just kept a separate database for public folders uh because they had a huge database uh, of public folders but now with exchange 2013 and exchange 2010 the huge database um definition has changed it has gone to gone in terabytes or it used to be in um, gigabytes so um so i have seen the organizations using the still a separate database for uh, public folder uh, mailboxes and uh, normal mailboxes are in the separate um, uh, database uh, which is a, which is another option uh, which you can do if you want to keep it separate and uh, apply a separate uh, database policies all right now um per server <coughs> so you earlier in legacy public folder you could only have one public folder database per server and now you can have multiple mailboxes per server uh, basically per database if you have multiple database on one server you can have multiple databases with multiple mailboxes then folders uh are there just to be multiple public folders per database not just multiple folders per mailbox command so in even in 2010 you could have used you could have used commandlets uh, which was like public folder database now it's just mailbox same as normal mailbox so um, there's a the big change as well 
um, high availability. Uh, this has been a critical uh, feature with legacy public folders. Um, it used to be, uh, it, it was never easy to uh, troubleshoot the public folder replication issues um, with legacy public folders. Um, now we have moved to the DAG uh, high availability um, replication. So the DAG is same uh, same replication which we do for mailboxes which I've been doing in Texas in 2010. So um, I have never seen any, any big difficulty, any issue with the DAG replication. So it, it's quite easy uh, to troubleshoot and uh, fix it. Compared to the legacy public folder replica, so it's, it used to be the um, replica on different server. Now we have DAG uh, database copy on different server. Hierarchy storage: one public folder hierarchy per um, database. Now we have one writable hierarchy per mailbox and others are readable. What does it mean? It means that the access to the public folder is faster. Um, you, you, you connect to any mailbox, uh, um, any mailbox and you have the hierarchy available. So you can, you can view your public folder and just connect it. Uh, right. Hierarchy synchronization. Earlier it used to be a multi-master application of hierarchy. It's used to synchronize using public folder emails. So it was email-based synchronization. Now hierarchy kept in sync using same technology Outlook uses to keep in sync with exchange client request updates whenever available. So it's a mailbox sync. Content replication. Replicated, earlier it used to be replicated between databases. There's no, there's no replication um, of uh, public folders separately, so it's it's DAG replication only. So if you don't have if you don't have a DAG, there's no other way to replicate the public folders. So it's highly recommended when you have a public folder, you should keep a DAG for the uh, for the replication of the public folder database. Search. It earlier is used to search only the items inside the public folder not the attachment. Now it does the attachment as well as items, which is another cool feature. Uh, public um, permission management. It used to be the ACL, you have to assign the ACL. Um, now it is um, RBAC level permission assigning. Uh, that's just, uh, just the management of the public folder. When it comes to the access of the public folders, we still have the ACL the same way it was in legacy public folders. You can just log into Exchange uh, 2013 uh, Exchange um, Administrative Console, and from there you can manage public folders. Um, in a way, it's it's better and easy now uh, in that console, uh, but so the shell is so um, used by many of the organizations and the administrators because you can run one command and it will be executed on multiple folders. Administration, um, like I said, well, it used to be uh, it used to be public folder management console and shell. Uh, now it's ESC. Exchange um, Administrative Console and Exchange Management Shell. Outlook Clients, any Outlook version used to work in uh, legacy public folders, but now we have only Outlook 2007, 2010 and 2013. OWA, so OWA 2007 and 2010 used to work for legacy public folders. Now we have only OWA 2013, which will work with modern public folders, and that's supposed to be the um, cumulative update one exchange server to access uh, uh, public folders. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Modern public folder, um, <coughs> modern public folder hierarchy synchronization. So, how does the hierarchy synchronize? Hierarchy synchronization is most important for um, public uh, public folder mailbox users. 
you would remember issues in legacy public folders. If you create a new new folder in secondary um, public folder in uh, uh, in, the, in the modern public folder mailbox, if you if you create a new public folder in the secondary public folder mailbox, then secondary public folder mailbox will contact primary public folder mailbox and update the hierarchy. And um, then primary public folder mailbox will share that hierarchy, hierarchy update with the other um, other mailbox, other public folder, uh, modern public folder mailboxes. So as an example, you can see this here. Um, point number one, clients connect to mailbox uh, two on the right side. All right, then client creates a public folder named PF5. You can see on the lower with the, with the red color. Um, then the request is forwarded to the primary public folder mailbox one, which will add PF5 in the PF hierarchy. PF hierarchy will be updated on all mailbox, all modern public folder mailboxes where users are connected after 15 minutes. This is very important. If users are connected right away, it, it will just take 15 minutes. Uh, it, will, it will be updated after 15 minutes. But next point is very important. Public folder hierarchy will be updated on all public folder mailboxes where no user are connected after one hour. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Modern public folders access. So how how a not modern public folder access um, um, how a modern public folder is being accessed by a user? User connects to their home public folder mailbox first. Then user finds the public folder which he is willing to use or add it or or add. He opens the folder from his Outlook, but in the back end, user connects to the public folder mailbox which contains this folder. So use for the user, there's no change. The user will not see any difference if he's using Outlook. If using if he's using um, OWA, there's a there's a separate feature I and mean, there's separate connectivity. There's no uh, public folder option in um, OWA, um, which is straightforward. So there's a difference in OWA, but in from Outlook and working inside the public folder, there's no difference for the user. So it's just the back on the back end, it's going to do this uh, task. If if the user creates a new folder, which means a hierarchy change, and then again it will be updated. To, uh, it will be updated to the primary uh, modern public folder mailbox. And then it will be synced to secondary, um, um, secondary modern public folder mailboxes, and then um, it will be available to use. So if you if you see um, if you see any day that uh, you, you get an error that you are not able to expand the public folder, this means that it's, it has not been synchronized yet. All right. So uh, this is another thing which I want to talk about here because you're, if you're accessing it and the public folder gets full with your data, um, you just brought in a um, very big file with a lot of uh, pictures, uh, there's kind of a sales uh, team's uh, PowerPoint file um, for a, for a um, very um, expensive uh, hardware or some, some kind of a software tool or very expensive, so there might be, you know, uh, 30, 35 slides, 40 slides with a very huge data and a picture that, that can be a, a huge uh, big size and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, uh, my, my mailbox, my, my public photo mailbox is getting full. Then what you need to do is you need to split it, split the public folder data using this uh, uh, script. This, this should be there in your scripts folder in exchange uh, uh, solution files. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. 
I hope you guys are enjoying the session. Next slide is modern public folders compatibility. Only Exchange 2013 users can access modern public folders. What does it mean? Which means Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2007 users can now access modern public folders. What does it mean? Let us take an example. If you create a public folder in Exchange 2013, then mailboxes in 2013 can only access it. But Exchange 2013 users can access all public folders, uh, be it Exchange 2013 or Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2007. Compatibility requirement is Outlook 2013, Outlook 2010, or Outlook 2000 client can only access modern public folder, which is which is the same requirement as uh, mailboxes for Exchange 2013. Outlook 2013 CU1, the community of update one or later uh, client, sorry, um, OWA, OWA, Outlook Web Access or Web App. 2013 community update 1 or later clients can also access modern public folder which means Exchange 2013 should be at least community update 1. Nowadays I recommend to install Exchange 2013 community update 2 as I did not find any um, problem with the installation and uh, yeah, initial initial release had some issues, so we released version two, and now version two is working just fine. And there are so many issues uh, are fixed in version two. Um, sorry, version two of the community update two. To access uh, to access modern public folder from OWA, you need to open OWA and then right click favorites, then select add public folder and select public folder from the list and click add. This will start showing the public folder in the list of your folders in OWA. Make sense? It's so easy to connect and add. This, is, this means what is what it is doing. It's just not loading all the public folders to OWA, which might take long time, but it is just gonna pull up the favorite public folder which you're going to use in a way it's a great feature because you don't want a whole list of the public folders and get confused and search for your public folders right so you it's, it's a very nice feature just add it add the favorite ones which you're going to work maybe you have so many public folders in your hierarchy which you don't want to access and which you don't need but it may just makes your um, work difficult to just search your public folder, public folder, right? All right. Let's move to next. Move to the next slide. Public folders in coexistence. I know everyone is interested in it. Many of you preparing for migration. So, uh, public folder in coexistence um, works like this. Um, in coexistence. You need to complete all mailbox migration before migrating public folders into Exchange 2013. Remember, Exchange 2013 users can access Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2007 public folders. So you are not worried. You should not be worried um, if you migrate migrate the mailbox from 20 uh, from Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2007, the user in um, the migrated user in Exchange 2013 will still be able to access public folders. All right. Um, continue using legacy public folders. So it means that still user will be able to use public fold, legacy public folders. Um, and I would recommend continue using legacy public folders until all mailboxes are migrated. 
If you migrate a public folder before completing the ma mailbox migration, then your legacy users will not be able to access it. Let's remember it. And then you will have to do the cleanup. Um, if you will start the whole migration from the beginning, um, otherwise you will have to just continue the previous migration. All right, this means Exchange 2010, Exchange 2007 users can't access Exchange 2013 public folders because of the design change from database to mailbox. So again, it's a design change and it's legacy and uh, hard version uh, issue as well, uh, which, will, which will allow you to access uh, Exchange 2013 public folders. It's the same way you might have seen if you run a command which uh, which is uh, get something and then apply the like get client client access server and apply some setting um, like set client access server uh, when you do that on exchange 2007 or exchange 2010 the settings on exchange 2010 I mean the servers servers uh, in exchange 2010 will accept the command and for exchange 2013 client access server it will pop up an error so it will not do not work. It's the same way uh, public folder will not be able to access uh, from Action 20 January 2007. All right, let's move to the next slide. All right, this must be interesting for you. You are preparing for migration. So migration requirements and assumptions. Exchange 2010, so this is a requirement. Exchange 2010 is Exchange 2010 SP3 or later, I'm sorry. Exchange 2007 is Exchange 2007 SP3 RU10 or later. Your ID for the migration has organization management and restaurant management permissions. All the mailboxes have been moved to Exchange 2013. This is very important and critical as we discussed in the previous slide as well. Um, if you don't follow this, then you will. Um, lose the connectivity from Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2007 for the users left on Exchange 2010 and 2007. Public folder name should not have backslash. So if you have a public folder which has a backslash in its name, um, you need to change it uh, before starting the migration. Oh, yeah, which I mean, the, when you when you are going to start the migration, I mean, basically when you are going to complete the migration, you need to you need to um, have some downtime, which can be over the weekend or late hours in the evening. Um, if you if you are if you, if you are a twenty four by seven organization, then you might need to declare a downtime um, for the public folders. So which means that the main box will still be working, but the public folders will be locked and it will not be uh, available for uh, for the users because it's being migrated and then you will be changing the database um, um, in configuration. All right. Uh, then perform a backup of your public folder before you uh, before you before you start the migration. Um, well, there's no issue, but still, uh, it's recommended to take a backup. So take the backup of the public folder databases. So no public folder coexistence possible. So it, what what does it mean? It means you cannot you cannot have a public folder um, yeah, one public folder in Exchange uh, 2010 or 2007, which means a different public folder database, and also some public folders in Exchange 2013. It will not work this way. All right. So, no public folder coexistence possible. So this cannot have both the both the um, Exchange 110 or Exchange 113 can't have the public folders working. Exchange 2013 public folders will not be accessible from legacy mailbox. Migration will be running at the speed of two to three. GB per hour. So we'll be, we will see, we'll discuss about the migration timings and the requirement uh, in the next slide uh, because it, it, it depends what are you doing. So 
when I will explain you, it might be sounding a uh, very feasible option to continue uh, with the two, two to three um, um, GB as well, because um, it will be running offline. Um, of course, um, what we will be doing, um, I will explain the next, next step, which will not affect much to your downtime. All right. Let, let's move to the next slide. Here's the one slide which all of you will be interested in listening carefully. Um, legacy to modern public folders migration steps. For the okay, I have defined divided um, basically with the steps on the left and right. You can see the different different colors uh, because there are some steps to be run on Exchange 2013 and some are to be run on um, Exchange 2010. Okay, if you don't have if you have not installed the latest uh, or the com cumulative uh, updates or the service packs and uh, roll-up updates as recommended in the previous slide, you, you might not be able to see a few of the commands. So if you are not able to see that, see, see a few commands, you need to go back and install the service pack and the cumulative updates and the roll-ups, which, which I have discussed in the previous slide. All right. So the first step here is uh, is to be run on legacy exchange server. It can be Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2007. What we are doing here is we are taking the snapshot of the public, pub, current public folders. So what are we doing here? We are we are taking the public folder structure, which means the public, we are taking out the public folder hierarchy. So get uh, hyphen public folder. Um, just want to get the public folders and it'll, it'll keep the um, structure in the CSV format. Then the next um, is get public folder as well as, I mean after the public folder getting, it's, it's going to take out the statistics um, uh, which, which, will be, which will be telling us the sizes of the public folders. Um, then it's a uh, uh, it's going to take out the permissions. The third one is taking out the permissions. So um, so the first command is taking out the structure. Second 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 command is taking out the item uh, item count size owner. Third command is taking out the permission. Save it somewhere. We might need it to. We might need to compare it once we finish the uh, migration. If you're, if you're not able to access uh, some public folders uh, after the migration, you would need to verify um, uh, the, the permissions. Basically. All right. Let's move. To, let's move on to the next step. Next step is prepare, preparation on legacy exchange server. So now we have to prepare Legacy Exchange Server um, in a way uh, for the for the migration basically. So what are we doing here is we are setting the organization um, with the public folders. This is set organization config hyphen public folders logged for migration false. So what does it mean is the public folders are n not logged for the migration, which means it will not. Um, start the migration. I mean, it will not be migrated, it will not complete the migration even if you start it, or it will fail um, the completion uh, command. So right now we are just fal falsing it so that accidentally we should not migrate it. Then the next switch is hyphen public folder migration complete. This is false. It means that when we will start the migration, it will, it will migrate the data and stop at 95% of the public folder size. How about this? This is, isn't it cool? So what I was talking about in the previous slide is 2 to 3 gigabytes per hour. We just need to run it and you should forget it until the database migration, I mean public folder migration completes. All right. So 
which is which is going to run on the back end. It's not going to affect anybody in the organization. So, um, in the so what's happening here is your ninety five percent of the uh, data is being migrated, and after ninety five percent, it will be it will be going in the auto suspended mode, um, so that when all public folders are completed to 95%, you can just go and run the command to complete the migration. All right, so let's move on to the next command, next next tab. Preparation on Exchange 2013 server. Delete any existing public folder. So what are we doing with these four commands is trying to find if there's any public folder um, available and then deleting the public folder, then deleting the public folder mailbox. So not, not uh, we are not exactly doing anything. If you have not, if you have not created any public folder, you might like to skip this step. But it is always good to check in the first uh, in the first part of the command, which is just just a get command. Get command will show you if there, there is any migration request or the public folder or public folder mailboxes. Then uh, it's better to go when you don't see any mailbox or public folder available in your organized um, in your Exchange 2013. So, uh, so again, I just want to remind you: you have to run a different uh, um, commands on Exchange management shell of Exchange 2013, which is on the Exchange 2013 side, and there are different command sets for Exchange 2010 and 2007, which you have to run Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2007 Exchange management shell. Right. Um, next step is export public folder hierarchy from source into CSV file on legacy exchange. Which means you have to run this command, these commands on Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2007. All right. The main concern you will be searching for this particular PS1 file. Basically, this, these two files comes with um, Exchange 2013 script folder, or you can download them from the internet internet as well. But you can just use the scripts folder um, and copy this 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 scripts from the Exchange 2013 uh, folder um, or what you can do is you don't need to export you know um, you can run these scripts from Exchange 2013 and it will only export the data from Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2007 um, basically because uh, because at this point of time there is no other public folder um, hierarchy or public folder or public folder mailbox available. All right. So uh, the first command is export public folder statistics. It will export the public folder statistics. And the second, second command is public folder to mailbox map generator. So what it's going to do is uh, based on the mailbox size, so it depends what size of the mailbox you are configuring for public folders. It will generate a mapping list which will tell you that you need these number of mailboxes with the name. So the command continues in mailbox size and then import file path and export path file path. So the import file path in that part you have to use UNC UNC file name um, the file which will be exported in the previous previous command um, using export public folder statistics that file you have to import and you have to give another UNC path to export a file which will be the map generator generator um, scripts file so um, basically you have to um, you have to know three points here that what mailbox size you're going to assign to public folders. This is very com uh, important. This is kind of a designing part. So until you have, you don't have the clear picture of this, you should not go ahead with this step because then the calculation will um, not go correct. So um, take a approval on the mailbox size of the public folder before you run this command and then write the mailbox size and then give the import file path and export file path and you're good to go. Right? So let's move on to step five. 
The step five is create public for a mailbox in Exchange 2013. But this is kind of a manual step, but you can also autom um, automate uh, somehow. Um, what I would prefer to do is manual so that I can be I can be assured that I'm creating it in the right place. So I'm saying new, mail new mailbox hyphen public folder, which means it will be a public folder mailbox, and the mailbox name. Where is mailbox name coming from? The mailbox name is coming in export file path file. So in the previous command, there was a uh, file came out through the map generation script. So the map generation script will have the mailbox names, and you have to use that name or if you're going to use different name then you have to configure different name in that particular file this is a very important crucial step and as number of as as number of mail, as many number of mailboxes mentioned in that file you have to create that number of mailboxes here and depends on the distribution you can you can now that this is the time when you can decide the which on which database you want to create this particular uh, public folder mailbox maybe you want to segregate to multiple um, databases right so um, so that that you can do at this point of time all right let's move on to the next step that next step is migration request creation so migration request creation this is what we were talking at the step number two that we have to run this command new public folder migration request source database then get the folder database, give the server name, so the, this, this the main server name, main public folder server uh, name you have to give there, and uh, may you have to make sure the replicas of the public folders are working fine, I mean the replication is working fine. All right, so um, give the name of the source server, then it will uh, get the CSV date, okay. After that, what is what I'm gonna give is the map generation file path so it will pick up the data from the map generation file the csv data command we're giving and then it will um, it will start the migration yes it will start the migration but it will stop at 95 percent so now after step number six you have to wait you have to wait until the migration finishes for the for all the mailboxes you have um, for the all for all the public folders you have mentioned um, I mean basically all the public folders you have in your public folder database so um, there's a command which says get public folder migration request and then hyphen get public folder migration request statistics include report and um, it will and then you can add the you, you can review the report which will show you what is the status of the public folder migration where where is it stuck or what is the percentage completed all right use that command line and um, uh, verify when it's completed when it's completed and it's in auto suspended mode basically when it's in auto suspended mode then you have to run the step number seven once um, auto sus suspended state is reached set, set the bit on the org object that you make the switch so what we're doing in the, in the seventh step is setting the organization back um, um, to um, setting the organization for, um, for the migration so now we are locking the migration this is the time when you have to um, when you have to um, run this command uh, step 7 uh, and 8 in the downtime when you have downtime declare then you have to run this command um, which will log the public folders for uh, migration then you have to complete um, uh, the, the, then we have the step number uh, eight. So step number seven is on Exchange 2010 or 2007. But you can run this command from Exchange 2013 as well. But recommended to run it from Exchange 2010 or 2007. Then you have to complete the uh, suspended migration. To complete the suspended migration by running two commands. The first command is um, again removing the completion. 
So if you remember, there were two settings we did, public folder migration complete and the public folder um, log for migrations. Log, we have already locked it in the previous command. Now we are, um, now we are, um, we are issuing the command which will let the migration continue and will not stop at 95%. All right, set public folder migration request identity of the public folder uh, migration prevent completion will be false. So um, it will complete the migration. Then you have to run the command to complete the migration. So zoom public folder migration request identity slash public folder migration, uh, whatever public folder. Uh, yeah. That's the command you have to run basically. Uh, basically, this is the command. This is not the name of the public folder. So if you just run public slash public folder migration, so it will it'll start the migration rather than um, giving any public folder. So it's not a confusion. It's not a public folder name. It's, it's the it's, it is the command. It will it will complete all the um, public folder migrations. All right. Let's move over to the next slide. In this very session, we learn about modern public folder architecture. We learn about uh, modern public folder comparison with legacy public folders. We learn about modern public folder hierarchy synchronization. We learn about modern public folder in coexistence. We learn about modern public folder migration requ requirements, and um, we learn about modern public folder modern public folders migration migration steps. All right. At this point of time, I would like to thank you for joining and listening to me. I hope this session would have been helpful to some extent. Please feel free to um, give your feedback to my email ID, prabhat at msxchangeguru.com. You can subscribe msxchangeguru um, or comment on any blog wherever you need some help or have, some, have anything to say. Uh, we are good in answering. Um, actually, MS Action Guru is not just me. We are a few, um, a few, few people who write their blogs there. Um, and we are available in Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, and questions. So let's go back to the um, live meeting. Um, I will enable the poll and I'll also answer your questions. Okay, so uh, I would request you please uh, um, help me with the poll. Um, so the first question is coming on to me is when migrating from 2007 to Exchange 2013, that 10,000 public folder would, will be migrated and uh, will, will this migration create 10,000 additional mailboxes? Um, no. Uh, it will not uh, create uh, 10,000 mailbox, uh, 10, 10, mailboxes, but it will categorize based on the public folder mailbox uh, size you give. So basically that, that's what I said is important uh, in the migration step. All right. Uh, we don't need to create 10,000 mailboxes, which is not a requirement. The requirement here is accommodating the public folder um, public folder, 10,000 public folders. So that can be, if the size is very low and you allow them to be created in, in two mailboxes, it will be just two mailboxes, not more than that. All right. Um, then the mailbox, next question is, with the mailbox size limit in Exchange 2013 is 100 GB. The Combination of all public folders within the mailbox can't exceed mailbox size quota to control. Okay, this, I think this is the answer to the same question. So it's again the on the on the mailbox mailbox size you have. All right. Um, thank you for your valuable feedback. Um, I will consider it. I know um, with a sh with a short span of time. I couldn't co <clears throat> could not cover cover any demo, so maybe I will try in the next uh, session anytime. Um, thank you everyone again, and uh, um, have a nice weekend.